Tonight, I want to talk about Loki Episode 4. Now, major spoilers for this, but I'm just going to jump right into it. Okay, last episode they were left off seeing the Ark explode and they were stuck on the planet Lamentis. We begin this episode, well, sort of learning a little bit of the backstory of Sylvie, but now we cut to how they get off, right, of the planet. Sylvie and Loki look like they fall in love with each other, which is two variants falling in love, similar to the way maybe Ravona and uh, Mobius were going to fall in love with each other. But, you know, two Loki, they're the same person, just from different realities, that are falling in love with each other. So he literally fell in love with himself, creates this huge nexus event, not a splitting on the timeline, talking straight up on the timeline. Boom, lets the TVA know where they are. Bam. That, that actually was something I considered could happen. The TVA finds them somehow. I didn't guess it was going to be that way. But I don't know. That felt a little too cheap on, on the whole. But I guess you had to get them back to the TVA as quick as possible. Now, the big one, obviously, if, if we watched it, you know, we see that the timekeepers, the you know, the people controlling the flowing of the time, not real, they're robots. So I still kind of think Kang is, is over everything, but a new theory kind of, you know, just spit right into my head, which got me really excited. My theory, which it's, I'm not the only person to have this theory, you know, so it's not my theory. So a theory that I firmly believe, let's call it that. But I did think of it independently, so... Uh, kudos to me for that, right? I think maybe that Loki might be behind everything in setting himself on this path, possibly thinking that he got this news that I can't ever change anything, so I'm going to make sure that this dude is evil and he's just a bad guy, but through interfering he's actually going to turn him good, which is what we see playing out. Now, it might not be, you know, it could be a bit of both. Like maybe the next two episodes, because there's only two more episodes left, maybe the next two episodes are exactly that, you know, because we saw those four Lokis at the end credit scene. So maybe they are trying to say, hey, there's just nothing you can do. And then one of them pushes them in and says, no, there is. You can make it. You can be whatever you want to be type thing. We're proof of that. And then, boom, he gets to be good. Because Loki was already told, you know, you're nothing but a villain. You're nothing but someone that helps other people realize their potential. So, you know, having learned that in the very first episode, he has slowly come to see that he's more than that. And I think that maybe the next two episodes are going to be him not just learning that, but him believing that. Because we got remnants of that in the regular MCU timeline of him believing that he could be better. And, you know, he even tried to face down Thanos. So this Loki never went through any of that. So this is effectively six episodes of him going through multiple years in the other timeline to realize that, but he learns it in the span of a, a few weeks in six episodes, which would be phenomenal because it would get our Loki, the one that we know from the MCU, it would get him back, yet he's also this kind of anti-hero, probably make him stronger because he's not at war with Thor all the time. He is independent. He, he finally comes out of his brother's shadow, and he is his own person. So I, I think that that's probably where they're angling, and Tom Hiddleston is doing a phenomenal job. One of the one of the best pieces of acting I've seen, not just in this show, but just in general, is when Mobius tells him that Sylvie has passed, and he, you know, his eyes just boom. I mean, God, on cue, man, pulls that emotion in, and then stifles it back with a smile and just says, "Good, good," but God, man. Just, uh, it was phenomenal. This this episode really was emotional. Uh, again, heavy spoilers, Mobius is pruned. Now, we don't know if Loki survived pruning because of the whole end credit scene. If 
if Loki survived pruning because of his magical powers and Mobius didn't, or if Mobius is there too, we're not sure. We're going to have to wait for uh, episode five for that, or, you know, maybe six. But whew, a lot of stuff happened here. I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for episode five. This is a really good episode. Uh, I know a lot of people might have been disappointed with episode three. I was not. I thought that they handled the story really well and shot it in. This episode just kind of brings everything back. It was a great episode four leading into the last two. So now I think, uh, according to some trailers, we're going to get uh, like a revolt of Lokis and they're going to revolt against that planet that they're on. It looks like maybe a wasteland New York or something, but it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, let me know in your comments what theories you have. If you like my theory, if you don't, if you hate it, if you think it's the worst thing you've ever heard, because it possibly could be. Yeah, and I will see you next time.